Uh, welcome back, tennis fans. Still in Monte Carlo. It's another news clip. And this one is pretty sad news for all the Djokovic fans because we've been waiting for his return. And it was very short-lived because he went out today against this man, Davidovich Fokina, someone who's played two times prior, won in straight sets both times. And me and Ben on the watch along today was kind of blown away um, by the fact that Davidovich Fakina was able to beat him. He's someone who generally is a younger player who struggles with closing out matches. Uh, he tried to give Djokovic so many chances to get back in the match, uh, but Djokovic was playing terribly. And this guy deserved to win in the end. I mean, I mean he made it pretty hard work. Probably should have done it in two sets. And he won 6-3, 6-7, 6-1. Uh, in the second round of Monte Carlo. And he did pull off some really spectacular shots today. Other times, though, in the second set, he just double faulted games away and gave Djokovic so many opportunities to get back in. Um, it was a fascinating one, but I just want to know, what do you guys make of it? Of course, it is a big shock exit. It's the first time Djokovic has lost in an opening match of any tournament since 2018. So it's not something he does very often. And you've got Jose Magado making a good point as well, saying it is a rare back-to-back -back loss. Um, the only time he lost back-to-back -back matches in 2021 was in Tokyo. So everything was pointing towards Djokovic winning today, the head-to-head, -head, uh, the fact that Djokovic never loses back-to-back. Uh, -back. And I really did think Davidovic Vakina didn't have it in him to beat one of the top players. But fair play to him, he was able to. Uh, although he did fall over about 10 times today, it still worked out and he managed to get enough just to get it over the line. Uh, we've got some more tweets here. This is uh, a quote from after the match. Djokovic saying, I collapsed physically. Didn't like the way I felt in the end. Need to talk with my team. I saw some other quotes as well, talking about how he didn't feel really comfortable with the way he was playing um, and physically was unable to really sort of push on and take the battle to Fakina. I think that was evident in the third set. Something which was a bit strange is every time these two have played, the third set, the third set has always been 6-1. Um, but I wasn't anticipating it to go in the way of Fakina this time. Um, another one from Gil. This is really good analysis. He was saying post-2016, Djokovic has said repeatedly that he plans his fitness training specifically to peak for slams. He hasn't been past the quarterfinal at Monte Carlo since, um, and it's a bad calendar spot. Too far from Roland Garros, too windy, and a tad slow. Result, Djokovic's lowest win percentage of the big clay events. And I thought I would bring it up to show you guys. These are some of the other Masters events. Um, you can see on the clay courts, if you look at Rome, he's got an 86% win uh, record there in Rome with Monte Carlo coming in at 74%. You've got Madrid there, 78 So it is one of his worst events, and he's not really done too well. You've got, what, two wins here. So one win in 2015, another in 2013, a few finals. But if you compare it to some of the other Masters events, it's not so, it's not one he's done so well at. And I think a large part of that is the fact that Nadal does dominate. And like Gil says, with the timing of the schedule, being one of the first tournaments back on the clay courts, it sometimes takes him a little bit longer to get going. And with his sort of fitness uh, regime, because he is very systematic with everything he puts in his body, as we as we now know, um, he, he often aims to try and peak at the Grand Slam. So I wouldn't worry yet, Djokovic fans. He's still going to be in good form, you'd think, for Roland Garros. But this one didn't go to plan. And uh, for Kina is the only man we can really praise because he's going to be now playing the winner of Dan Evans versus Goffan. Um, and I honestly think he could take him if he plays like he did today. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Of course, it, I had to bring you the news video because it is a big shock exit. Uh, the bookie's got it completely wrong. I think he could have got Fakina at sort of fives and sixes. Um, but he got the job done. And that is why we love tennis because anything's possible. But let me know in the comments section, what did you think went wrong with Djokovic today? Why did he look so bad out there? And as much as I want to heap a lot of praise on Fakina, I think ultimately the game was lost by Djokovic more than it was won by Davidovic Fakina. Uh, but thanks for watching, guys. Make sure if you haven't already, like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.